What's up there, humans? Thanks for checking out the show. I'm your host, Tony Bardo, where each week we'll talk about health, wellness, happiness, and social interaction. If you like it, share it, review it, and tell a friend. For now, enjoy today's episode. You're just funny. It's just funny. Yeah, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. Come here. Come here, though. Yeah, he's crazy. Today's a lot of fun. I say that with all my podcasts, but this one truly is, you know, because of course the last like three, four episodes have been kind of talking a little bit more about my health and uh, trying to stay positive and get motivated. And this dude does it for sure. Um, in a time where social media has uh, taken reign of a lot of our minds, we're forgetting about the important stuff. And what's the important stuff? Well, the important stuff is our health. It's our wellness. It's our overall well-being, the longevity of life. And uh, what better person to talk to than a new friend of mine? Uh, he doesn't know it yet, but we we became best friends during this podcast. Uh, I learned a lot, and I can't wait to have him back on. Uh, we met through a, a mutual friend of ours, David Vogel, who I've had uh, him and uh, Thais on the podcast before. They are the founders of the Volo Foundation, which uh, you know we talked uh, numerous times about um, climate change and, and the impact that us humans are making on the earth and the change that uh, Volo is is doing to help. And we met through David because uh, David's a big uh, proponent of uh, staying healthy, sustainability and all that. And so was Kevin, you know, Kevin Mason here uh, that I have on the show today. We talk a lot about that. We talk a lot about sustainability and longevity of life and whether that's, you know, nutrition, uh, which he knows a little bit about. But his wife, I think, takes takes the reins on that where, where she's a nutritionist. Uh, but he is a strength coach and the founder of BioFit Performance out of my hometown, Orlando, located right up in Oviedo. So check that out. Uh, you can see them on Instagram at BioFit Performance. And we talk a lot about uh, cryotherapy, cold therapy, um, you know, contrasting, which is where you're, you're hopping into a sauna or a jacuzzi after you do some cold therapy. And then, of course, strength training and, you know, the human body and, and how adapting to new things and experiencing new things in training is going to make us better and we're going to we're going to become stronger and better humans for us so i'll leave his instagram tags at the bottom it's at kev mason uh k-e-v-m-a-s-s-o-n and he actually owns his own nutritional company as well so uh, biofit nutrition they have a really cool line of some great products so definitely check them out uh, but if you're worried about your health and wellness um and you don't really know where to start what better way than to actually start with uh, the basic stuff? Uh, I have the opportunity to thank our friends over at Perfect Keto. You know, um, as you guys know, I'm not big into doing keto all the time, but just like veganism, because I am vegan, there's some great plant-based options that Perfect Keto has. And if you follow a keto diet or not, it doesn't really matter because the idea of uh, just eating the right things and intaking the right things, whether it's collagen in your coffee uh, Perfect Keto has some really great options for you. And I think you should check that out from bars to nut butters, uh, even, you know, super fat. Uh, they have all that stuff at perfectketo.com. Uh, again, you can use the code the Berardo. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. With that said, I do want to go ahead and introduce uh, my guest on today's podcast. Uh, again, he is the CEO and founder of BioFit Performance. Check that out. Really cool health club uh, right there in Orlando, and hopefully it'll be expanded to Tampa, but I enjoy this conversation. I know you guys are going to love it. Everyone, please help me welcome Kevin Mason. What's up, bud? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, man. It's my pleasure. No, I'm, I'm always interested in uh, anything to do with health, wellness, and just overall us being better humans. So uh, I love your social media. Uh, I'm super excited to dive a little bit more into uh, your clients and what you do out of Orlando, because a lot of my listeners are from Florida. And of course, I'm an Orlando uh, born and, and raised native, which is very rare. And what about yourself? Are you are you from Orlando? Have you lived here for a while? Um, Orlando, two years. Miami, um, about 11 years. Ooh, and nice. my accent is super weird. Uh, so let's just uh, take let's, the... You let's know, get it out of the way. Let's just get it out of the way right now. Um, so born and raised in, in the UK, uh, London. Okay. But my mom is French, so it's kind of a, like a Franglish accent. 
<laughs> That's awesome. I, w- I was going to say like UK or Australia or like a mix of two, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you cleared that up. So, <laughs> so what, what brought you over to the States? Was it family or? Um, yeah, a little bit of both. So, so real quick about myself, I used to be a professional rugby player. Um, so f- in the, in the UK at, at the age of 18, you sign professional, uh, we don't have college sport, so it's either, you know, straight out of high school or you pretty much just go to college, but you know, <laughs> so th- that's basically what happened with me, you know, at 18 signed pro, uh, got injury, an injury, uh, ACL injury at 21. Ooh. And then from there, you know, it's like, it wasn't an end, career ending, but it's just, you know, my body just couldn't take it anymore. I just burned out. Um, so I decided to go to college and coming from a rainy, cold England, uh, Miami sounded pretty cool. So I applied for, for Miami and I got, uh, got accepted over there. Oh, um, man, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's how it started. That's how my U S uh, U S life started. That's great. My family yeah, lived in the Caribbean, so that was, I, it was awesome as well because I was only like an hour flight from them compared to the UK. Oh yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, did they come? Did they come a lot to Miami to hang out? Yeah, yeah, they're pretty much uh, they retired now in Florida, so it's nice. Oh yeah, of course, that's the way to go. That's why. Well, that's the problem with Florida, right? That's the good thing and bad thing is you can retire here, but for yeah. all of us people that live here currently. The last thing you're thinking is like, get all these retirees out of here and get these, <laughs> stop, right. like, stop coming here. We're booked up. Okay. We are booked yeah. up. Um, and you're currently in Orlando, right? In Oviedo or? Correct. Oviedo. Um, for the past two years. So we pretty much just build a brand new facility, you know, uh, my wife and I, and, um, we've been, we opened right in the middle of pandemic, uh, which was. Ballsy. Uh, which was, is, you know, a bit weird, but um, it, it ended up working out really well for us. Um, you know, we broke even in like two months. It was crazy. We were the only gym oh, open. Uh, we were the only gym open because every every other gym in the in the in the neighborhood was um, corporate. Yeah, so they, they had, had to follow for like, a lot of yeah. They had they had to follow their um, I guess their HQ or or whatnot yeah. and. Um, well, and let's, we were, yeah, we open. And let, let's point out too, by the way, if you were to open up a gym or really any business in the middle of pandemic, except for in Texas or Florida, you're pretty much mm-hmm. fucked. Correct. <laughs> so so yes. that was a good move on your part to open up, to be in Florida. Yes. Thank God we're in Florida. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. And we'll, we'll get into that as well, for sure. Uh, I'd be curious on, on your thoughts because you're so big into, into health, but um, do you and the wife have uh, a strong health and wellness background in training or coaching? Yep, absolutely. So myself, um, you know, being a, an athlete, um, I was a FIU strength coach for a few years. So D1 strength conditioning. And then after that, I pretty much switched from the athletic um, to private sector. So personal training and I'm still coaching a few NFL, Major League Baseball um, clients, but mainly general pop. Yep. My wife is the same thing, so same um, same degree. She's a little bit more nutrition, uh, biochemistry, but she is taking care of uh, all of our nutrition at, at BioFit, and she does the training as well. So she has one-on-one clients. Oh, that's awesome! And uh, I mean, that's the that's the dream team, man. How'd you get How'd you get so lucky with that? Like, you're more mm-hmm. fitness. She's nutrition. Like combined, you guys are like the fitness dream team. Like. That's very yeah, rare to happen. Yeah. It's awesome for sure. <laughs> it has pros and cons working with your wife, but in the same time, you know, it's uh, it's more pros than cons. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying that because she's right. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and also, I mean, do you do you really follow what she says? Because I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about you, but you know, my my wife, she's starting to try to get a little bit more into fitness, but she she never really was. Um, you know, of course, with me. I've slowly kind of got her into it, but even me, it's very hard for me to tell her what to do. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not certified anymore cause my certification obviously ended, you know, years ago, but I do my research. I know the, the nuts and bolts, right. Yeah. And even still, she won't listen to me. I'll write out programs. Even if I do it with her, 
Yep. I think there's something, I don't know if it's maybe because we're married or she's just yep. stubborn, but I know she used to have a trainer way back in the day before we started dating. So I think it's just probably something where if I tell her to do like five more reps, she's like, get the fuck out of here. Stop telling me what to do. Like, it's very hard to, to do that. Do you guys have that, that battle as well? Um, no, I think we, we kind of actually listen to each other. <laughs> yeah. We kind of listen to each other when it comes to nutrition. I listen to her when it comes to training, she listens to me. See um, wife, if my wife is listening right now, that's how it's supposed to be done. Okay. So take that's notes. That's right. Take notes. That is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And how, how typically, um, uh, do you guys, if you don't mind me asking your, uh, your nutrition, do you guys, uh, follow a lot of, you know, micro macros? Are you on? low carb, vegan, carnivore, like what, what do you guys typically do? We've tried uh, several, several diets, but honestly, like we are a big fan of flexible dieting, um, mm -hmm. yeah. just macronutrients and calorie counts. And, you know, we love like every normal being, um, we love to go out on a weekend. Um, you know, if it's, if, if I want a pizza, then we just order a pizza. Uh, it's not that we are going to order that every night, but we make it fit in our, in our macros. Um, of course. Yeah. So flexible dining, it's, it's a big, big thing for us, but you know, we've tried in the past different stuff, um, keto and, um, uh, I've tried carnivore as well a little bit. I've dived, dived into that. Have you? How, yeah. But how, how long did you do that for? I did it for two months. Uh, and and it's an experience. I'm not, I, I'm not going to judge, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't for me for sure. Did you do like the gambit, like legit, just meat, salt, liver, heart, like all that stuff? Or did you just do basic over the, over the counter stuff? Um, no meat, um, you know, grass fed, organic, uh, ghee, ghee butter, a lot of oh, fat. Yeah. And yeah, you uh, did it right. You did the legit stuff. Two months, man. Yeah. That's ballsy. Yeah, and honestly, I just didn't like it. Um, nothing, nothing against it, you know. Like I think, uh, if you want my my true opinion, I think you are missing on a few mi micronutrients. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. it, you know, if if someone is listening, is doing it, then you know, I kudos for you. Yeah, more power to it. Well, I think that's with a lot of diets too. That's <laughs> that's one thing I've uh, I've realized, and I love your. I would love to get your opinion on this. So I'm, I'm primarily whole foods plant-based only because of, of, uh, uh, I have Crohn's disease and the only, I was diagnosed, okay. like f I was diagnosed five years ago and I tried to do, um, a lot of different diets. You know, I, I pretty much just did an elimination diet to start off and, you know, I was big. I mean, I was 180 pounds, um, you know, at my, at my peak, um, you know, really low body fat in between four to six. And I was, I was shredded, but I was in taking a lot of calories too. So I felt really good about it. And I was eating everything under the sun. You know, I was counting my macros and uh, I was pretty much just intake as much as I could. And, um, I don't know if it was a combination of doing that for so long that got me Crohn's or it was just, you know, cause it's not really hereditary, but of course I, uh, I did not take care of my body. I treated it like an amusement park from the age of 18 to 25. <laughs> And I was diagnosed at about 28 with Crohn's and they pretty much just told me, Hey, this is just what it is. You're going to live like this. Now you're going to have these episodes. And I was going to the hospital every couple months and it was becoming a, a process. So I decided to do some research and I didn't want to be on a lot of medication. So I just started cutting out red meat and, um, I was still having issues. So then I would cut out uh, chicken and I was just having fish and of course, you know, fruits, veggies, all that stuff, protein shakes. But I was still having whey protein, so then I decided to cut that out and only do, um, you know, pea protein or hemp and just anything that was not giving my intestines a rough track, right? Yeah. And then turns out three years later after doing this, uh, unfortunately, veganism is, is the only way that isn't giving me uh, issues right now. And it yeah. could be, you know, who knows? It could be bread maybe that was the one thing that messed me up. And I could have kept all the meat I, because when I did elimination, you know how those go. I mean, it was just a group, you know, I wasn't really picking it apart individually meat by meat. So uh, that's kind of what helps me. But um, I mean, in terms of like nutrition and kind of what you're seeing with your clients, I mean, it, it's different for everybody, right? Like the, 
the, this whole carnivore thing and vegan thing, like I even tell people you shouldn't be vegan unless you think you need to be. Like don't do it because it's a trend. and Don't do it because you want to save animals. Like if you want to be, eat an animal, you know, do it. Whether it's moral or not is irrelevant. It's just like uh, if you want to smoke a cigarette, smoke a cigarette. Mm-hmm. It's legal. I mean, it's not good for you, but, you know, if you want to do it, go ahead. Um, I don't know if we should say that there's one diet that's good for everybody. And I think everyone tries to, like, put themselves in this category of I'm eating this way and this works for me, so it's going to work for you. And, I mean, as a coach, are you – like, what's your thoughts on that nutrition wise? And I absolutely that? think that you hit the, the nail on the head right there. Um, what I'm seeing is I am camp X or I am camp Y, where people are getting into those debates. Oh, keto is better than carnivore, mm-hmm. carnivore is better than vegan, vegan mm-hmm. is better than something. I think, you know, um, what you vegan is working a hundred percent for you right so you are gonna preach and say yes vegan is working for myself which is awesome now for someone um for someone else that may not be the case so that's why and and i think nutrition is such a hard topic for people to conceive where it's because it's so um personal yeah. And, and that's what I'm think, you know, when I'm seeing clients coming into me and they say like, Oh, I just want a keto diet. And I'm like, okay, but why do you want a keto is, you know, are you, can you not take carbohydrates? Like, is there something going on? Um, yeah. And no, they just say, no, I just saw this person lose 20 pounds and I just want to try it. <laughs> so that's why it comes in, you know, it's like, um, yeah. Nutrition is very personal and there's always, uh, I think there's always an aspect of taking every, everything. And, and that's why I love the flexible dieting and micronutrients so much. It's not because, you know, I love to cheat, <laughs> cheat on my diet every day, but I do life to, uh, I like to enjoy life. And if I can fit it somehow on, in my goals, then all the best, you know? Yeah, no, no doubt, man. I mean, th- this is, you know, coming from a guy, me, um, you know, again, I'm plant-based vegan now, but I, I have my own brick oven pizza that I built. So I make pizza. Yeah. Of course, now I have to make them, you know, vegan, which kind of sucks, of course, especially when my Italian father comes over with his big, you know, mozzarella balls and his meatball <laughs> and stuff. And I got to freaking throw all my Beyond Meat bullshit, um, yeah. which we'll get into that as well, because I'm super curious uh, your opinion on that, because I'm very upset about what's happening with, with that industry. Um but yeah, I think, you know, I'd, I'd love for you to explain uh, a little bit more about macros because there's some people that, that are out there listening, you know, they might have heard it, you know, keeping track of your macros and your calories. But if you can go into detail about that, because I think it's so important, especially if you do want to have those cheat days and those cheat meals, because sometimes people, um, whether it's fasting, intermittent fasting, or, you know, this low carb slash keto diet, which Atkins diet 2.0. But if you look mm-hmm. at like stuff like this, and people think that, taking away carbs just because you want to take it away. There's a lot of downside of not tracking that. And I think we, you know, unless you really understand the human body, you got to be careful of stuff like that. And that's why macros are so important. So if you could dip into that a little bit, that'd be great. Um, sure. So I'm going to make this super basic, even though it, it, it it's goes very complicated. It's, yeah. It, it gets a little bit complicated, but let's say that, um, the first thing that you need to do is probably find out your calories, uh, your maintenance, right? So once you find out, and then depending on your goals, if you wanna, if you wanna gain muscle, then you probably need to be in a calorie surplus. If you wanna lose fat, you probably need to be in a calorie deficit. Uh, once that's done, then macronutrients. So that's the protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Um, the those, two, those are the pillars. Those are the, those the are the big boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the two most important and the, the easiest one to, 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 to find out is the protein, um, which depend on, again, uh, it gets complicated, but you know, about two grams per pound is, you know, it's about roughly where everyone is. Um, and from the fat, uh, standpoint, usually from a hormone 
health percentage. You're out, you you want to be about 20% of your total daily calories. Um, and that's usually the average for most people and most diets, on, unless you're keto, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. Once you find your protein and your fat, then the rest should be carbohydrates uh, coming from carbohydrates. Um, Good so carbohydrates, the too. I'm sorry? Good carbohydrates, too. Good carbohydrates, correct. Yeah. That's the one thing I realized, not to cut you off, but it's funny that a lot of people that try to go vegan, whether I motivated them or someone else did, and they come back and they go, oh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm vegan now, and this is what I ate. And it's like all bread and all like <laughs> potatoes. And yeah, you're not eating meat, but you're like... <laughs> You're intaking so many carbs and the wrong carbohydrates. It's just, it's a horrible way to, to die. Correct. So. <laughs> Correct. Absolutely. And I, actually you brought a good point because I keep saying flexible dieting. Um, flexible dieting has a bad rep for that standpoint. Um, just because a donut is a hundred <laughs> grams of carbohydrate or whatever, it doesn't mean that it's good for you. Okay. <laughs> so it will fit in your macros, but it's probably not like a, like a whole food, uh, like a good carbohydrate, like rice, or or, or other yeah. um, good whole food for you. Yeah, anything aside from a donut, really. Like there's so many other categories. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's why I try to have my wife do like you know we were tracking our our macros and and I was like going through the whole process with her and she's like oh so I can eat like donuts and bagels and I'm like okay we're not doing this I'm not having this game with you yeah. this is gonna be a long <laughs> Right. Yeah, but it is a very complicated, uh, and you know, I threw up your your social media here. So if people just listening, uh, it's at Kev, uh, K E V M A S S O N. So of course, you know, if they're if you're cool with it, Kev, they can DM you, reach out to you guys. You know, head to your gym. It's in Oviedo, right? Oviedo, yeah, Orlando, yeah. East Orlando. And what's it? What's it called? It's called Biofit Performance. Biofit Performance. Cool. And uh, again, you guys specialize from everything from. Uh, you know, coaching from training, right? And Correct. then also nutrition. Yeah. So we do um, all around. So we, we pretty much try to be the one-stop shop. Coming back from my athletic background, um, even at FIU or D1 strength conditioning, you know, when those athletes have um, strength coach, nutritionists, doctors, athletic trainers, um, you know, massage fist yeah so um, those that's athletes have a team surrounding them and that's that's kind of what i wanted to do with biofit is offer general population so the average joe um a place like this where they are surrounded by a whole team so when they sign up with us whether it's personal training small group training or large group training they get access to the nutrition standpoint as well so they can either talk to one-on-one -on -one with the nutritionist or they get a um a basic nutritional plan that still educate them in and how to eat and what to eat and whatnot um Dude, we also so have a, we have a recovery room as well so the recovery standpoint which is i'm big into biohacking uh, i know this name uh, it's kind of have a bad rep lately but you know, I, I love um, stuff like infrared saunas. I love the ice plunge. I, I do ice plunge pretty much every other day. Um, so we offer this to our members as well. So hot, cold plunge, infrared sauna, compression boots, so lymphatic drainage. We have a massage therapist, chiropractor, physical therapist. You know, we pretty much uh, have a IV therapy as well. So, Oh, bro, yeah. I wish I was in Orlando again, man. You're like... You want to open up a location in Tampa? <laughs> <laughs> come on, yeah. come on down, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Pandemic's yeah. over, so you come on. You can afford to do another one. Let's go. Um, yeah, because I, I'm, I, I really the last like six months. I mean, of course, I've been keeping an eye on my health because uh, I'm trying to find everything possible to get a, get away from having medication uh, because of my condition. I know as I get older, it's going to get worse, mm -hmm. and um, I know if I take care of my body now which a lot of people don't realize, you know, it's like, it's like a vehicle, right? Your body's like a car. I mean, you, you're only allowed on a vehicle. Let's say it's a Honda Civic and it runs great, right? 250, 300,000 miles. Well, the faster you drive that vehicle, the more miles you're going to go, the harder you run it, 
the less amount of oil changes you get, the less amount you take care of the tires, like it's going to last a lot less. And you got to keep your body like that. You know, your this Honda Civic is only going to look good for so many years. And then eventually there's going to be rust. There's going to be dents and bruises and the tires yep. going to have a spare on it. Like the body, you got to treat it the same way. And a lot of people don't realize that because what you're talking about, people are like, well, that's good, but I got a job. I got light. Yes, for sure. It's, it's very tough to maintain, mm-hmm. um, especially if you're factoring in all this other stuff, like the massages and the ice plums and the saunas. And there's a lot of time that spends, right, to take care of these vehicles that we have. Yep. But what people don't understand is it might cost money and time, but what else are you doing with your time? You know, this is where, and I'm sure with your sports background, they preach this a lot, is time is more valuable than anything. Because mm-hmm. the amount of time that you spend in the gym, taking care of your body, the recovery, the rest, the sleep, as opposed to going out and partying and drinking and, you know, spending time on playing video games and doing all the shit that is really fun and cool, but you can't do that forever. Like when you're 60, 70, 80, you can't do that forever. So yeah. you're kind of like preparing your body now for when you're 60, 70, 80, 90. You know, the better you treat it now in your 20s, 30s, 40s, you're going to get longevity. So, and then, you know, you could be 80 and be playing virtual reality video games, whatever the hell's out in 50 years, right? When we're 80 and 90, like, you know, that's how I look at it. Like I'd rather live longer and do more cool shit than just do really fun stuff in my twenties and thirties and then die when I'm 70 because my body can't handle it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. Um, the same way, um, now at 30, uh, completely different mindset. Damn, man, you look like you're in your 20s. It's probably because all the working out and the plunging you do, bro. <laughs> yeah, so 20s was all about, you know, bodybuilding and trying to look nice. Uh, oh. But, uh, yeah, past 30 now, it's all about uh, longevity and yeah. trying to maintain, uh, have a good mindset, have a good body and, and good life. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And then I, I'm curious what you think about plunging since you do it so often. Um, I just started that and I got an ice barrel if you're familiar with the company. So I got that uh, a few months back and I did it every other day, usually on my rest days uh, or if like I did cardio or something like that. And then of course, when this shit happened with my, with my lungs, um, I, I kind of had to hold off on training and and all that shit. So, but I'm excited to get back into it again because I love having it. It's so sleek and slim and I'm sure you guys have something similar uh, at your gym, right? Do you have a big actual tub and you have ice baths yeah, there? How, how does it work? Yeah, it, it, it looks like a jacuzzi. Um, oh, nice. So we have both. We have the hots and the colds. And the cold one is obviously like ice cold. Yeah. <laughs> how, how cold do you uh, usually plunge? You say you go every, every other day? You say? Yeah, so again, like exactly. we can we can talk about this. Uh, there's, do it. you know, there's no... Uh, there's no modalities, there's no method per se, like science proven methods of doing it. Mm. Um, I usually like uh, Wim Hof. So if you're familiar with him, he's, he's the Iceman. Uh, That's right. His method of, you know, pretty cool. There's actually some, some science, some studies around it. Uh, but the way I like to do it is um, like you just mentioned. So anything away from my training days, um, just because it impairs inflammation, Infl- you need inflammation to um, repair your, uh, your your muscle to grow into uh, to bigger muscle, so hypertrophy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you kind of need that natural inflammation to recover. But on my active recovery day, recovery day, or cardio day, um, yeah, that's usually when I I do my ice bath. Nice. Luncheon. Yeah, for sure. And then how um how long do you go? Uh, sure so again, right. yeah, that depends. I do like I do enjoy the contrast therapy. So when I when I do contrast, I do about four minutes in the hot, and then uh, two minutes in the cold, and then I I repeat about five times. So you know it would take me about half an hour uh, between the two. Nice. And now, if now I you... only do uh, if I only do cold, um, I try to stay about twenty minutes uh, in the cold. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the max I've done, I think was five at, uh, I think it did 38 degrees. That's the max I've done. Um, yeah. That's cold, man. 20 minutes. That's cold. a long time. Yeah. 
it's only uh, I'll be honest with you like you get used to it and the worst are the five first minutes after, yeah. after that it's you're just numb <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's that's exactly what it, and i mean you've been doing it for years right you were doing it when you were yeah playing ball right yeah. um and let me ask you this. So the benefits of ice therapy. So I've talked about it on the show before, but if you could lay out, cause there's so many great benefits. And I think it's so weird that we have studies on a lot of pointless shit, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of studies on this. I mean, of course it varies with each part, but there's so many great benefits to cryotherapy, you know, cold baths, um, even like you said, sauna. So I want to get it dip into that as well, but can you lay out the benefits of doing these cold baths? Cause I know it's scary to some people, but again, we're talking about longevity of life. So if I could tell you, Hey, this is going to for sure tack on five years. No, fuck yeah. that. It's going to tack on a year of your life. That's yeah. substantial. If you knew for sure that you were going to last till you were 66, right? But I said, Hey, one more year. If you just do cold baths a couple times a week, like what are the benefits here of this? Um, so, I mean, again, it's, it really is, like you said, it's a gray area where studies show this, um, it does this and then other studies say no, uh, so it is a big gray area. But then again, uh, from a, uh, from what we know for sure, um, it's a inflammation. Uh, so it, it basically gets rid of all the inflammation. So that's a great from a longevity standpoint, uh, inflammation does uh, impair your aging, so you age faster. So from from that standpoint, longevity and all that, uh, it does help. From an injury standpoint as well, so usually we ice um, acute injuries. So if you hurt, if you got a bruise, if you have uh, something that just happened, probably ice is your best friend um, to mm -hmm. get rid of the inflammation as fast as possible. Which that oh, alone um, should trump any science because we doctors tell you to do that. Yeah. So why not do your whole body? But yeah, <laughs> that's like common sense kicking in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's something about mental health as well. So um, mm -hmm. uh, not just being, you know, from a mindset standpoint. Oh, I'm a tough guy and all this, but also it does. Uh, when you get out of the cold plunge, it does have a um, uh, endorphins uh, kind of full crash into your brains so you um, there are some studies that shows that it actually helps combat depression um, and other uh, mental illnesses um, that's right so then again you know that's that's kind of what I've what I've read yeah and you know me personally the benefits that I, I see from it is um, is very similar to, which by the way, if anybody wants to test this out, first, if you're in Orlando or Oviedo, I recommend going to Kev's gym because those are professionals. They know what they're doing. Uh, don't just like buy an ice barrel and just start testing it out without doing research because it is dangerous. I mean, it's, you know, depending on how your mm -hmm. body is, you can't just hop into freezing cold weather and stay in there for 20 minutes. This is not the best idea <laughs> for longevity. In fact, you'll yeah. probably, you'll probably pass out and have hyperthermia. <laughs> but what I did for a few months just to, to get my body used to it, if anybody is looking to, to try it, is do cold showers. Yeah. You know, because more often than not, depending on where you live, unless you're in like Finland or I don't know how it is over in the UK, but, you know, at least here in Florida, the coldest you'll shower will actually get is maybe like 60 degrees, 55 degrees, depending on the time of year. So it's not like you can freeze when you're doing cold showers. So it's a really good practice to just get used to it. And I yeah. did it first thing in the morning. So I'd wake up and I wouldn't do shit. I'd hop in the cold shower, literally just hop in. So a lot of people that are listening, especially my wife and a lot of my friends that I've talked to that I've convinced them to do uh, <laughs> cold bath and cold therapy is you always like turn on the shower to that warm temp and then you like wait 15 minutes to, to get the right perfect warm temperature for you to hop in. No, I'm talking you hop in the shower butt ass naked you don't even wait for it to warm up. You just turn it right on as cold as you can go. Do that for five, 10 minutes, even rinse off, try to get used to it. Do the, um, you know, uh, body wash and all that jazz, get used to it that way. And then I hop out and I do training right afterwards. Like I'll yeah. do some type of stretching or yoga or meditation. I won't necessarily do weights, but I'll do kind of something to get my body going. 
and uh, before I've eaten anything too. That's typically what I did to start off. Uh, and then once I did the ice bath and I got my ice barrel, it wasn't that big of a deal because mm-hmm. I've, I've been doing it for so long. So, I mean, is that something that you would recommend if someone wanted to get used to it that way? Or do you have a practice if like, I know you mentioned David uh, does cold therapy and you have a bunch of clients that do it, but how do you usually do like their first day of cold therapy to get used to yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, so that's why, I mean, you just mentioned uh, the, the cold showers, which truly helps. Um, but again, like we have them do contrast. I think contrast is a good, um, good mm-hmm. mix just because they get the full benefits of being in the ice for about 20 minutes without actually being in the ice for 20 minutes because they get a little break with the hot. Um, yeah. So, you know, going back to the shower topic, um, I, I like that. I like for a beginner to start in the shower. Uh, even like uh, start with a warm shower and just go to the cold one, um, the last two or three minutes of your, your shower, um, mm-hmm. just stand there in the cold. So you can do all your washing and all that with the hot, which yeah. is, you know, normal. You don't have to suffer for that. <laughs> the last two minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once you're done, just go in the cold. Uh, that's, that's a great way of doing it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then when you, when you say contrast, so I, are you doing sauna also, or are you doing jacuzzi? So both, you can, both. Cool. Uh, okay. so we have infrared sauna that you can do with, paired with the cold plunge, uh, which is a good, I like that. Um, yeah. But that we also have a jacuzzi, so hot plunge, cold plunge, just jump in uh, in each, each pool and then you get the benefits of, uh, you know, I like, so studies are saying that, you know, there's cryotherapy that goes below 150 um whatever the temperature is it's you know it's super cold then again it's air right so air is not really a good um conductor compared to water Mm -hmm. so even if the water is at minus uh well sub 40 degrees so usually my plunge is at 40 uh i've seen other plunges go to 30 eight 37 mm-hmm. um that's the av- average for a cold plunge that's fine that's that works the same way as a cryotherapy um just because water is a really really good conductor so um that's right. so back to the contrast therapy um being in the water makes it you know really intense from going to the cold back to the hot yeah. Uh, you get that vasodilation from the blood blood vessels back to vessel construction in the cold, uh, and it acts like a like a pump mechanism, right? So mm-hmm. basically, your vein just keeps on uh, opening and closing and letting the all the, new, the the new blood and the nutrients back into the uh, the area that's being damaged or uh, or injured. Yeah, and you know to to really over simplify this whole process we've been talking about for the past 10 minutes um and there's so many great benefits to it but i think just as as humans as we've evolved um we're such a fascinating uh species and the body is so incredible and you know you look at depending on what you believe in so sorry uh out there for people what i'm about to say but um we evolved from primates and if you look at what our human body has become it well not recently these last few hundred years but uh our bodies can do so much and we've for whatever reason especially here in america because we're so fucking lazy our bodies have now become these like weird uh vessels that we just lug around and we don't challenge ourselves and we don't you know uh create movements uh, that's going to make our bodies better and stronger and you know, our bodies went from having to ru- outrun saber tooth tigers to now, like, we have a system in place that we sit and get our food mm-hmm. through a drive through. We don't even get out of the vehicle anymore. We have to have drive through. So much, in fact, that we've gotten so lazy that even Chick fil A and McDonald's have opened up two drive throughs. So that means that. There's so many people, more people, in fact, that want to sit in their car and get their food, that there's not enough people. There's less parking spots now than ever because there's more direct to your door and delivery Mm -hmm. to your house. And grocery shopping, that's too much work. We'll deliver it to your door in less than an hour. Like, 
what are we doing, man? Like, there is no way that our bodies can last this long because eventually something's going to happen. God forbid, 10 years from now, 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now, and our bodies are going to be these weird, crunched over, stick figure things. And then there's going to be a massive invasion of like crazy alien tigers. And we won't be able to fight ourselves. Like, no one's going to be strong enough because be, you and me and Thor, like, we're gone. We're, we've been dead for hundreds of years. This new population will not be able to handle the invasion of new animal species that are, are coming this way. And it's, it's kind of terrifying to see how lazy we're getting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, no, that's, that's absolutely it. We had, uh, we had family over, uh, for Christmas. One of my little cousin put on uh, Wally. You remember that, 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 oh, yeah. that, that movie, the cartoon, yeah. the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And they had those people floating in the air, um, on, Virtual reality, so oh pretty God. much like metaverse, right? Some on yeah. Facebook, <laughs> just driving on floating things, eating and drinking soda, and it was so unbelievable how true it is to our future, you know. And that's yeah, yeah and that it's came, very scary. To and see that, that came out like ten years ago or fifteen. Yeah, years? it did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's an old. It's, that's an old animation for sure. Yeah, that one, and then I just saw on uh, I think it was HBO Max or something. Uh, was Ready Player One. Yeah. Have, have you seen that? that? Well. Yeah. Dude, if yeah. that's not the metaverse, I don't know. That's metaverse as well, for yeah. sure. 100%. And then yeah. there's another really good one that I think people should watch. Cause it's eye-opening watching these movies. Is um, Elysium with Matt Damon. Okay. It, it's kind of like a weird... It's the same dude that did District 9, so it's very sci-fi. It's very out there. But there's two worlds. So there's like Earth that it's like poor and everyone's gross and out of shape and can't afford anything. And then there's this Elysium, which is like this paradise of, you know, everyone's in space and they live on this rotating planet and you got to watch it. It's pretty cool, but it's interesting to see how our bodies, they just won't work anymore in the new yeah. earth. So they have to build these machines mm -hmm. to like fit onto your body so you can actually do things. Wow. to keep up with the and that's where i see it going i feel like it's going to go to the point to where we're getting you know Neuralink and we're getting all the stuff to make our lives mm -hmm. you know uh, i'm sure for the better there's a lot of benefits to what's happening in the future and of course metaverse you know maybe there's benefits i don't know it should be interesting but we're just trying to get out of touch with reality mm -hmm. and it's so that's why i love training and love working out and it upsets me so much these last few weeks i haven't been able to do it because when you challenge yourself and when you do these cold therapy sessions and you do red sauna and you do kettlebell training, which you've never done before, and you like you test out your limits a little bit, it's going to be hard at first. But when you can master that to see the results like mentally, physically of just switching up that, you know, taking your body and pushing it to new limits. That's why I say the body's so fascinating and incredible is it adapts so quickly and repairs. Um, yeah. And doing these things like cold therapy shock your body and take it into this new way of like surviving. And that's how you can fly, fight off a lot of stuff, not just inflammation, but, you know, diseases and chronic illness is, you know, doing these type of things that really challenge your body because your body's able to react. I mean, look at what's happening with the virus, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, our bodies, believe it or not, are adapting to COVID. They adapt to flu and to a lot of stuff that goes on in the world and by challenging ourselves and challenging our bodies and getting exposed to these new weird and sometimes terrifying things, it makes us better. It makes us better mm -hmm. humans. Yep. Yeah, and absolutely. are, and are you seeing, uh, just from a client perspective, are you seeing people coming in and they're wanting to take care of more of their body and they're open to trying these new things or? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what makes us very different, right? It's, uh, we are more than just a regular gym where, uh, people just come in and train. Uh, yeah. We uh, so for myself, what I believe in is there's four main pillars to a um, to fitness. It's the uh, you, you have the training, which is a big component. You have the nutrition, um, which is another big component. Mm -hmm. Now, where most gyms fail, it's a recovery standpoint. So that's again recovery modalities um, that we just talked about. And the accountability, um, having someone to guide you or to be there for you. Um, you right. tend to see like like this new concept of life coach, you know, like this didn't exist like five, ten years ago. And now I'm seeing life coaches come popping out 
all over the place. And I think that's a great thing, you know, like if, if having that accountability for someone and yeah, if that's telling you them like, Hey, you need to do this and that, you know, and it yeah. helps. Absolutely. No, that's great, man. And that's um, I, definitely next time I'm in Orlando, I'm going to check your place out because that's one thing that I hated about the fitness industry. You know, when Thais and myself were at LA Fitness, obviously this was back in 2003 when I started. So I was 18. And then once I did sales for a little bit, then I got into training and got certified. And um, I didn't like the way that's a corporation, right? Like yeah. I didn't like the way they approached the training aspect because there weren't pillars. You know, no. it was only let me get your money. I'll give you 30 minutes, you pay me, that's it. And if I wanted to do stuff on the side and kind of like text and call and, and be that coach for them, they wouldn't allow that. I would have to charge them. And it was very, I didn't like it. And I think a lot of places treat clients like that. And not only is it, I think, immoral and should be illegal, but there's so much information out there. And whether it's good or bad, I, I don't think, I'm trying to be careful here what I say, because you probably know what I'm going to say, but there's, <laughs> especially, I mean, you're, you're still in the business. I'm just a fucking podcaster that has experience, but so it probably has that you more, but there's so much information out there and there's some good stuff and there's some good people. And I know there's people that want to do good, but there's so much bullshit out there. You're right. And it's something that's so important. Like it's not something to be, you know, monopolized and joked about. I mean, this is yeah. our health. Like this is, there has to be people that know what they're doing that are behind what you're doing because it could be life-threatening depending on how you're, how you're doing it. I mean, you know, putting yourself yeah. like in this low carb keto bullshit and, you know, I've done keto and uh, I don't know, I, I got my opinions on it, but if it works for you, it works for you. But I always looked at health, wellness, and fitness as it has to be sustainable and long lasting. Yeah. And personally, from my experience and my research, keto is just not, it's not long lasting. You can't sustain that for the rest of your life. It's just impossible. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I, to touch on the point that you're making as well, um, I think social media is a big part of it as well. Um, when people sure. are looking at this, you know, when you have, you have guys just popping out of nowhere, like, um, like Liver King, for example. And, <laughs> oh my God. and you know, like they're looking amazing right. the, the guy I'm, i'll be honest he's looking like a greek god yeah. statue but I, I wonder why kev <laughs> right exactly so you know that's my point where you have to look at um what are they gaining from it right is this real life or is this just for social media is this person doing this for likes because he's gaining a few thousand dollars from youtube or like uh um, you know, from Instagram or whatnot, mm -hmm. or is there a uh, real science behind it? And that's, I think is the issue with the, the, the current state of the fitness industry, um, where we have influencers providing cool stuff for social media to look at, but that's not the right thing to do or may not be the right thing for you or the person trying to just, uh, lose weight and look good. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I, I even warn people about this too, uh, uh, as much as I can is if someone is just on social media and you're following them and they look good and they're trying to sell you something or they have a plan or something like that, it, it's probably best to, to see a nutritionist and to see someone that actually knows what they're doing. Because again, I go back to if someone on social media has a plan, whether that's a PDF file they send you and it's the same for every single person that automatically should be a red flag to you unless it's one-on-one -on -one coaching. And even that I'm a little suspect on social media, but I prefer that over just someone who just sells a plan. That's a PDF that they email to you and never talk to you. You just got to be careful stuff like that. Because again, we're, this is not something, you know, like a job that you could just, you know, work at. And then if you don't like it, quit one day, like you're committing now to doing something that is going to impact your health long-term, short-term, how you look, how you feel on a daily basis. Um, you just got to be careful stuff like that. And yeah, social media, I think you're right. Is That's a great point. It's just a, such a huge proponent of not just fitness, but how we're living our lives. Like we talk about so much information and there is some positives of having all that information, but dude, is there some negatives? Yeah. Yeah. And, that's absolutely true. And are you seeing that? Like when clients come in, do they ever 
because I talked to a buddy who's also a, um, he's a plant-based coach out of California. He was just on the show uh, a few weeks back and he goes, uh, yeah, one of the biggest problems I have now, especially during the pandemic is people cancel with me because they followed an influencer or they followed somebody that said that I should do, I should do workouts this way, or I should eat this way. Mm-hmm. Like, are you running into that at all? Or are your clients a little bit more sophisticated than that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that too. So I'm, I'm a little bit more high end, but, uh, it, in the same time, um, I do have, we've just been voted best gym in central Florida. So I do have people coming in, uh, paying the full price of coaching, but just wanting to use the gym just because wow. it has a name. It has a name now in central Florida. That's and, awesome, man. Congrats on that. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's for sure. But, um, the, um, the downside is I'm, I'm getting more and more social media influencers trying to come in and just to film um at oh. our play. um mm-hmm. so <laughs> you know it has it has pros and cons um <laughs> but in the same time when i see you know like there is some exercise that are just not meant to happen you know if you are <laughs> if you are balancing on a swiss ball with a kettlebell on one side and you're just doing like circus act um <laughs> You, you know you're doing it for the gram, right? But it's <laughs> not how you got that that great body, you know? That's no right. one talks about the fun- fundamentals anymore. No one talks about squats, deadlift, you know, push-ups, pull-ups. It's, it's not sexy anymore. So yeah. it's like, okay, what can I do to get the most likes or the most views as possible? It's yeah, yeah. It, is, it is wild, man, because, you know, I thought at one point, especially during the pandemic, you know, because TikTok came out and I actually enjoy TikTok. It's starting to get more diluted, obviously. But when it first came out, I liked it because no one was trying to be, you know, cute. It was mm-hmm. like authentic. No one's using digital cameras for it. They're all using it on their phone. Like there's no editing process. Everyone's yeah. like being themselves. And I really enjoyed it. Now it's kind of like getting more towards the gram. But I thought at one point we were like, gonna get to the point where it is about fundamentals it's about being real and it's about being yourself but there's still that group of people that want to use the filters and want to look good for everybody else and they're not you know they're not worried about how they feel and how they look to themselves they're worried about what other people think and i think eventually hopefully a large portion of the population is going to get to that where they stop caring about what people think because man i stopped caring about that a long time ago and Cause I get a lot of hate for the podcast, you know, cause sometimes I talk about some polarizing issues and you know, the, the one thing I love about something like this is, you know, I always tell people, Hey man, start your own podcast and, or just come on my show and let's talk about it, you know, cause I'm not going to yeah. do this show and I'm not going to work out for you. I'm going to work out for me and what's, what's best. And what really kind of kicked me in the gut, um, pun intended is when I was diagnosed with Crohn's because I had to stop eating less food. I couldn't mm-hmm. work out as much because when I'm putting strain on my body, it causes stress. And sometimes, you know, that causes a reaction. So, and that's why I got into cold therapy and, and, um, and contrasting just because it does kind of relieve you, you know, relieve a, a lot of stress and it, it's really helped me fight inflammation and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's so important, uh, to really just do things for yourself and, and not do it for the gram. So that's, that's very well put. And speaking of which, because I just realized we're like almost an hour, but I have so much more I want to talk to you about, but I don't want to take too much of your time. So I'll, I'll have to force you to come back on the show Yeah, because well, I could talk to you for yeah. a couple more hours probably. Yeah. Um, but the one thing I wanted to ask you, because, you know, I am uh, I am plant based and I eat whole foods, but occasionally I do eat um, meat replacements because I miss a burger. Just mm-hmm. like, you know, if anybody's out there that's vegan, of course, it's it's always fun to have these options like Impossible and Beyond Meat and things like that. But I don't make it a huge part of my diet. I would probably say it's 0.0001% of my diet. I might have it twice a month um, for one meal. But what's your thought process on it? Because for me, it's become in the past, like, I don't know, three years, it's become extremely mainstream. And it's kind of frustrating because I feel like we do this as a civilization. Like we latch onto these trends and we don't give a shit about what's right for the body or what's wrong for the body. We just we hop on this trend like McDonald's and KFC and all these folks are now having beyond meat and beyond chicken. And I'm like, I've tried one of those before. And dude, there has never been so much oil in a fucking 
patty or a meal that I've ever seen in my life. Because I usually make my own vegan patties. But yep. the ones that you get from fast food are similar to a burger you get at McDonald's, a real burger. You know, when they first opened up, their burgers were good because it was just a cow from a farm up the street. But when they yeah. opened up millions of locations worldwide, they have to mass produce it and they have to cut corners and they have to do things that maybe aren't necessarily good for us, but it's going to make them a lot of money. And that's how they can charge a dollar for a hamburger. Yeah. And I feel like that's happening with the vegan community and the vegan diet. Like, are you seeing that at all? Does your wife probably follow this or like yeah, what's your I mean, that's probably a great question to, to ask her. But, uh, from, from my personal standpoint, um, Again, I have nothing against vegan, but from what you're saying, you know, being beyond meat, um, it's it's process, right? So it's um, to an extent, it's um, you're trying to make vegetable taste like meat, where it's kind of kind of intuitive, right? You you it's you making veggies, trying to taste like an animal product. Yeah. Um, Instead of eating so that's animals. why it, it goes, you know, <laughs> you know it's like, um, and again, you know, like uh, if you miss the taste of it, or if you're trying to, you, you just said it yourself, right? So it's trying to, those big corporations are trying to uh, leech on the trend or trying to make money from a lifestyle uh, of veganism. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, who owns Beyond Meat? I think it's, it's isn't that like a big meat corporation or something like this? I, I think it was crazy. I saw that in a, um, in a documentary. Yeah, I think, I think someone bought either vast majority of shares or, or something, but yeah, it's, it's getting uh, them and Impossible. I don't, I don't remember which one it is, but it's getting kind of, it's getting squirrely, man. And it didn't, what's, what's even more weird is it didn't take long. Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm no 30, way. I'm 36. I think this vegan thing started cranking like seven years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like it's going to like cap soon. Like eventually everyone's going to have processed vegan stuff on their menu. And then in 20 years, we're going to say, you shouldn't be eating vegan because of this and this it's processed. And it's like, bro, if you want to be vegan, do what I do, do what I recommend. Obviously see a nutritionist, but whole foods, like if you don't know what's in it, don't eat it. Like, and that, that goes with yeah. meat as well. I mean, you know, if you buy your meat, whether it's grass fed or whatever, but I always loved knowing where my food came from, whether it was meat, fruits, or veggies, I'd rather pick something up from a far farmer's market than Publix. Um, yeah. Because yeah, you look, know, at the, uh, look at the food label, right? If, yeah. if it has more than three ingredients, then, then it's, Probably not good for you. Right? Hey, you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I look at that with protein as well. You know, sometimes a lot of people, if you're into fitness and into working out, you got to be careful with your protein. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you buy whey protein, I mean, again, me, I do I do hemp or um, uh, pea protein, but my protein usually is pea protein, vanilla extract, and maybe like cane sugar. Yeah. But when you look at your protein powder and you look at the back of that, and it's like 15 things and two of you know 14 of them you can't pronounce you got a problem, especially if you're intaking a lot of that. And again, we're talking, this is all about longevity, right? If I could sum up this podcast in one title, it would say, you know, what's going to be better for you long-term, like longevity. And we just, we just don't know a lot about what's going in our food and what we're drinking. And so we just got to be careful with that type of stuff because you can't just hop on a trend. Veganism sounds cool. It sounds cool to save the planet. I get it. But if you really want to do it the right way, do a whole foods diet, things that you know of, see a nutritionist, do it the right way. Because that's the one thing I realized as well is you have to know what you're doing. Um, you know, if you want to go vegan or any other diet, really, like the carnivore diet, same thing. That stuff's dangerous to switch that up on your body so quickly mm -hmm. and to, uh, to give your body, you know, the nutrients that it's not been used to for 20, 30 years is dangerous. So you just got to be careful with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And you made a good point with the uh, with the protein. So um, we just started. We just released our own uh, supplements as well, the BioFit. Oh, did you? And the uh, cool. and it's the same thing. So I went to Wisconsin and a couple of weeks ago, actually, and in the freezing cold of Wisconsin, and we visited a, uh, a grass-fed um, uh, 
milk cheese factory um, in Wisconsin, and, oh. uh, and that's where we get our whey protein from. So how no our whey isolate is just uh, you know grass fed milk, and and we have some uh, vanilla uh, extract, cocoa beans for chocolate, mm. and some stevia. Stevia and monk fruit, and that's it. That's literally our ingredients. So we have five ingredients in our protein. Oh, dude, that's money. Do you guys sell that at the gym? We sell that at the gym and online as well, yeah. Oh, cool. Give a shout-out to where uh, people could buy that online. Uh, if they go on uh, biofitnutrition.com, and um, they'll, they'll find it. Otherwise, on our website as well, biofitperformance.com. So both the gym and the, uh, and the supplements link. That's awesome. And I'll leave the links in the uh, podcast description, folks, if uh, if you're listening out there. But yeah, man, that's awesome. Because again, I go back to, for whatever reason, it, I'm sure it all has to do with money, but you look at like everything now and it's like, they're, everyone's trying to be competitive and they're just loading this shit up with ingredients. It's like, we don't need that. And I know we no. want it to taste good. And, you know, but I look at like working out and eating the same way, which is, you don't do it because you enjoy it. Some people do, and they should, because I, I personally enjoy it. Not everyone's going to. But you should do it, again, to be healthier and to have a long, fruitful, exciting life. Mm -hmm. And eating should not be this, like, orgasmic five-hour fiesta that you spend shoveling chocolate and carbs down your gullet. Like, it it realistically shouldn't taste that good. You can You can make things cook good. I'm sure your wife would agree with me here that you can make really plain ingredients taste fantastic and be healthy. But if something is like so good, like it tastes absolutely delicious, like a peanut butter chocolate cake, oh, it's horrible for you. <laughs> if, if it tastes good for you, it's probably not the best for you. And I, that's how I like my protein. Like I like it bland and, you know, yeah. it, if it tastes okay, I'm happy. Cause I'm just going to add fruits and veggies to it. Like, but I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not making it a protein shake. I usually mix it with water, honestly. Um, but I don't make a protein shake for it to taste good and to last like two hours. I chug it down. I get my nutrients that my body needs. I call it a day. I don't think about it. Yeah. Like I eat Brussels sprouts too. You think those taste orgasmic? No, they're horrible, but they're great for you though. You know, but you and me and like people that are like us, um, we kind of treat food like fuel, right? It's like, okay, that's what our body needs. Um, a lot of people are in today's society, they look at food like, ooh, I don't like that. Or, ooh, oh, yes, I love that. So I'm going to eat more of it. That's right. Uh, you know, the main, main difference between two, two people like that. That's a, that's a great way to put it, fuel. That's the best way to put it probably. It's just treat your body like the machine, give it the fuel and call it a day. Like don't, you know, we shouldn't, it's almost like we spend more time eating food and picking out what we want to eat than actually doing things that are good for us. Like working, working out, focusing on our goals, focusing on our future, focusing on your family. Like imagine how much time, like if you're listening out there, folks, just close your eyes for a second. I'm going to take you to a, I'm going to take you to a special place. Close your eyes and imagine how much time today you spent thinking about food. It's way too much time. <laughs> it's way too much time because it should not be very complicated. It should be like you said, Kev, grab food, put it down your face. It's your fuel. It's going to get you through the day. That's it. You know, that's how the cavemen did it. And they might not have lasted as long because they were stupid and just ate raw meat <laughs> before we figured out fire. But really, that's all they did is they just they ate whatever they could that was around. They harvested, they ate it, and then yep. it got them through the day. And, yep. you know, we've seen 300. OK, those folks are shredded. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be the motivation. But anyway, Kev, man, listen, I've, I've taken a lot of your time. We'll definitely do this again, man, because I could talk to you for hours. Yeah, yeah, um, we got a few, uh, few topics to talk about. Yes, sir. Uh, but I'm excited to uh, definitely check out your place. I'm going to check out your nutritional line as well. So uh, I left your social here uh, on video, but for people that are just listening, where can they follow you on Instagram? Where can they follow the company as well? Uh, so Instagram is uh, Kev Mason. Um, on Instagram as well, it's Biofit Performance. And otherwise, the, the website is uh, biofitperformance.com or biofitnutrition.com. Sweet. 
Well, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, Kevin Mason, check out the gym, my Orlando friends, uh, check out the website. Uh, you're you're going to like this. And not only that, but if you haven't already, be sure to follow Kevin because his social media has a lot of cool motivation stuff, motivational stuff, and I'm sure he'll update you on everything going on with the gym. So, Kev, thanks again for the time, man. We shall do this again, buddy. Pleasure, sir. Thanks, Have a good one.